move on then uh, for more hypocrisy here because, uh, of course, uh, I can't remember how long ago we were talking about this, but the, the narrative uh, that Captagon, the drug, uh, is now uh, Syria is the main source of this drug in the world. Uh, there has been an update on this story. Yes, um, there has indeed. Um, we reported a little while back on um, a BBC a documentary that was in collaboration with three other um, media-related outlets funded by the UK Foreign Office, by the National Endowment for Democracy and USAID, in other words, CIA and American intelligence agencies, and Qatari and Saudi Arabian um, media outlets based in the south of Syria. Um, now, one interesting point that I want to make here, um, I was looking into this in the last few days, is that Syria was largely drug-free, funnily enough, until the regime change war began in 2011 and 12, and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and various derivatives um, were using the drug to carry out uh, suicide bombing and also just to um, ensure their ability to continue fighting even when they were injured. Um, so the Captagon uh, 2 bill is on its way to the Senate as part of an urgent legislative package. This was a report yesterday, and the media is full of reports on Syria being a narco state. It was voted uh, across both parties, 364 and uh, 58 against. Headlines like this are flooding um, the media in the UK and the US. So ISIS terrorists, which are uh, proxies of the UK-US cartel in Syria intent on regime change, they're taking Captagon superhuman drug that makes them charge at tanks. Yes, that's a real headline. Um, but what is quite extraordinary here is that the argument is that President Assad is going to personally produce a drug which enables ISIS to carry out attacks against Syrian forces and civilians inside Syria, just as we're supposed to believe that President Assad um, would launch chemical weapon attacks against his own civilians when his own forces are about to liberate those civilians. So again, we have this sort of mass suspension of disbelief across the media. Um, who's one of the people responsible for the sponsorship of this bill and others that I'm going to mention? U.S. Congressman, Republican French Hill, 2nd District of Arkansas. Um, and he's basically brought in a law package called Peace Through Strength. I would replace that with force in the 21st century. So let's have a look at um, what those bills include. Um, provisions included in a package fighting against foreign adversaries and strengthening national security, of course. And who are their allies? Um, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. No guesses over why they are their allies. Um, but let's have a look here what he says. Basically, uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is a transnational drug kingpin. The hyperbole is getting more and more extreme who exploits his dangerous drug Captagon to generate billions in illicit funding and devastate families in Syria and the region. Now, what's interesting, they're claiming that the income from Captagon in Syria is 57 billion. The GDP, the entire GTB, GDP sorry, of Jordan is less than 50 billion. So I'll let people work that out for themselves. And in 2021, it was described as 5.7 billion. So he's brought in the illicit Captagon Trafficking Suppression Act. He's also brought in the holding Iranian, sorry, you, never mind, holding Iranians accountable for uh, their global terrorism. However, French Hill uh, has effectively skin in the game. In August 2023, he visited northwest um, Syria in the presence of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, who also facilitated the smuggling in of John McCain in 2013 to meet with uh, ISIS and other terrorist leaders. And in the same way, French Hill met with um, al-Qaeda operatives, including the White Helmet in northwest Syria when he came in illegally. He's also uh, been reported to have been supporting the separatist movement uh, on the next slide in uh, Sueda in, in southern Syria, um, reportedly calling the Druze leader of the separatist movement that's backed by Israel and the United States, 
um, in southern uh, Syria. And then if we move on, uh, I just want to point this out. So let's have a look. This was on an article that I was reading. Um, so uh, these are headlines. Now comes the Taliban narco state. Well, that's interesting because opium was not a problem under the Taliban. It became a problem, of course, after the U.S. invasion. With China's help, Mexico is on the verge of becoming a narco state. Myanmar, emergence of a narco state on India's eastern borders. Guinea-Bissau, micro state, narco state, and Syria has become a narco state. Is this becoming a pattern? Mike, well, let's go back to 1971 and Nixon's war on drugs. Just play this very short introduction. I began the meeting by making this statement, which I think needs to be made to the nation. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. I have asked the Congress to provide the legislative authority and the funds to fuel this kind of an offensive. This will be a worldwide offensive dealing with the problems of sources of supply as well as Americans who may be stationed abroad wherever they are in the world. It will be government-wide pulling together the nine different fragmented areas where, within the government in which this problem is now being handled. Does this sound familiar? So you have the war on drugs. What happens, of course, exponentially, drug trade increases. The war on terror, what happens is terrorism increases exponentially worldwide. And of course, what this was used to do by the Nixon administration was to isolate economically and politically Latin American states um, back then. Um, and not forgetting, of course, that the U.S. could potentially be described as a narco state. It has a 500 billion income from the drug trade into the U.S. economy, which is almost equivalent to their de defense spending. And it's renowned for funding both sides of the drug trade and, of course, laundering money from the drug trade, providing money and arms to both the security forces that are fighting the drug trade while supplying weapons and support to the actual drug cartels that are running the drug trafficking. And of course, the US is, uh, I think, the number one in opioid uh, use globally. So very interesting here in the fact that they were responsible for the introduction of the drug Captagon in the first place through the terrorist proxies. Um, and, and again, Echoes of the Kosovo Liberation Army that run its forces, ran its forces on, amongst other things, on drug trafficking, drug manufacture and drug trade, while being supported, of course, by the West. And KLA were effectively predominantly Al-Qaeda. So I just want to give one example. So in 2021, um, in uh, Saudi Arabia, they came up with a story that... Uh, millions of uh, Captagon pills, if you just move on, Mike, please, yep. um, had been um, brought into Saudi Arabia in a confinement of pomegranates from Lebanon. And as a result, they basically shut down all imports from Lebanon, bearing in mind that this was months after the disastrous, catastrophic Beirut blast in uh, late 2020. Um, so they effectively cut back one of the few areas of um, trade with Lebanon while increasing trade for the same products from Israel. And this was designed effectively to politically isolate um, and undermine Hezbollah inside Lebanon because, of course, Hezbollah, as is President of Assad in Syria, are blamed for the production of uh, this particular drug. Now, uh, what is this war on drugs, which appears to be re-emerging since 1971? Of course, it's designed to stigmatize target nations, to isolate them politically and economically, and to enable and facilitate further sanctions on an already unprecedentedly uh, sanctioned country, which is Syria. It, in reality, increases drug field violence because the U.S., as we've seen in Mexico, is, Mexico is funding both sides of the drug war. 
um, potential to orchestrate a failed state, in other words, to, to bring an already weakened state which has resisted regime change um, to its knees. And of course, it prevents peaceful resolution and facilitates further Western military intervention once um, the drug fueled violence has reached uh, a pitch. So cynical um, marketing here by the West in yet another attempt to, to completely um, destabilize Syria. Uh, and I mean, you're talking about Syria, you've talked about uh, much many other mm -hmm. countries there, Vanessa, but, but we've got to understand the, scope, the scale and the scope of this. Uh, it's not just about Syria or the other countries that you've mm -hmm. mentioned, it is a global thing. And we should remember that, uh, you know, George, w, or George Bush Sr. was accused of, uh, using the drugs trade to fund CIA black operations uh, when he was working for the CIA, CIA prior to him becoming president of the United States. So, you know, the, as you say, the drugs trade is a major driver for a lot of the wrongs that we see in the world these days uh, and for mm. the last for, for the last hundred years or so. Um, uh, the, the war on uh, on drugs has has not solved anything, and I mean the, the the fentanyl situation in the United States is off the charts. It's the same; it's increasingly a problem in Scotland as well. So that problem is coming to this country as well. But people uh, often sort of dismiss this as being irrelevant because it's it's happening in Syria or it's happening in Lebanon or it's happening in Saudi Arabia. This affects us on a daily basis. Absolutely. And if you look at a number of articles actually on the war on drugs under Nixon, what it was weaponized to do was to actually attack the kind of anti-war uh, anti left wing back then organizations um, and to target them as being um, affiliates of drug trade or being in support of uh, narco states, etc. So you're absolutely right. Just as everything that we protest against can be used against us if it's spun in, in the right way, then this is very much also what is coming. And plus, as you said, the introduction of these drugs that even when it was production was stopped in 1986, but continued in Bulgaria and was then smuggled into the Arab Peninsula by Turkish and Balkan um, drug trafficking cartels. So, you know, the fact is that who is moving all of these drugs around the world and using them against populations to destabilize and, de de um, and to stigmatize these populations? Yeah, indeed. Okay, 